Hello. Happy Halloween. Yes, I got my septum pierced. Yes, it is crooked. Yes, it is too big for my face. I'm supposed to touch it as little as possible and I can't change it yet. So that's that. <laughs> I feel like this video is a bit overdue. I've been asked a few times over the months to cover some nonfiction reads. I understand that nonfiction can come across as unsavory to a lot of people at first glance, but I hold the belief that as long as you find something that sparks your interest, even the driest of nonfictions can be a fun adventure. So as my TBR shelf accumulated nonfiction reads, I've noticed a pattern. They fall into one of three categories. So let's go over 10 nonfiction books that sit on my TBR that are just begging to be read. Starting with category number one. How about a bit of light reading? It's safe to assume that you're looking to have some fun while delving into nonfiction. That's very fair and understandable. So let's start here. The Pig That Wants to Be Eaten and 99 Other Thought Experiments by Julian Beghini. Within these pages are apparently 100 thought experiments to stimulate your inner philosopher. The internet claims that this is a portable feast for the mind that is sure to satisfy any intellectual appetite. I myself am a baby philosopher. I'm only in my first month into my degree. So on top of the more challenging readings that I'm being assigned that are a little difficult to wrap your head around, this kind of seems like a lighter, more fun approach. The kind of book that can raise a lot of interesting conversations, the kind of book that you close and talk to the person next to you about what it is you're consuming. I haven't read any of the books in this stack. This is a TBR video. So obviously I can't say what it actually has, if it's good or bad, but I'm looking forward to it. Next, The Sound of a Wild Snail Eating by Elizabeth Tova Bailey. I've discussed this one and a couple other in this stack in my Bloomin' Readathon video. The readathon begins tomorrow, I'm so excited. But in case you missed it, this is a memoir that shows us the experience our author has when she falls bedridden with a mysterious illness. While sick, Elizabeth Elizabeth encounters a common woodland snail. Goodread said, intrigued by the snail's molluscan anatomy, cryptic defenses, clear decision making, hydraulic locomotion, and mysterious courtship activities, Bailey becomes an astute and amused observer, providing a candid and engaging look into the curious life of this unappreciated small animal. As a fellow sick gal that loves snails, I feel scene. <laughs> I feel like this book is extremely important. I'm assuming it's going to be an immediate five-star favorite. If I don't devour this before the year is up, I'm going to be thoroughly disappointed. Super excited for this one. How did I not know this existed before recently? I, I, ah. Next, Entangled Life, How Fungi Make Our Worlds, Change Our Minds, and Shape Our Futures by Merlin Sheldrake. Look at this cover. Would you just... With this one, I'm gonna start with the Goodreads synopsis. In this captivating adventure, Merlin Sheldrick explores the spectacular and neglected world of fungi, endlessly surprising organisms that sustain nearly all living systems. Basically, if you've seen the documentary Fantastic Fungi, you know that mushrooms are basically the solution to every man-made problem that's ever befallen this earth. They're magical. They're the largest living thing on this planet. They communicate through their roots. Mushrooms speak to each other. They speak to each other. Amazing. In the autumn and the springtime, my husband and I go for long mushroom hunting walks on Sundays. These are some recent mushrooms that we have found. And every time we go on one of these walks, I want to pick up this book. So I understand that I'm extremely busy with working and being a full-time student, but another book that if I don't read it before 2022, I will be so disappointed. Ah! <laughs> uh, okay, we have now entered category number two. Owies! My body. <laughs> with this category, we're gonna start with Regretting Motherhood, a study by Orna Donna. This book is exactly what it sounds like, being that it covers a very taboo topic of mothers who regret becoming mothers. The back of the book says, if we are disturbed by the idea that a woman might regret becoming a mother, Donna says, our response should not be to silence and shame these women. Rather, we need to ask honest and difficult questions about how society pushes women into motherhood and why those who consider it are still seen as a danger to the status quo. So our author has years and years of interviews and case studies of people who wish they never had children and why. The book was recommended to me by a TikTok and I've been intrigued ever since. Being someone that doesn't really think motherhood falls in my future plans, I'm often met with the counter argument of, oh, but you're gonna regret not having kids. Whereas I never hear when people have kids, so, oh, you're gonna regret that. Semi for obvious reasons. Can you imagine? Yikes. However, I implore us all to feel an equal amount of yikes in critiquing people's not wanting to become parents. I feel like it's very well understood that not every choice is a one size fits all and I don't understand where the logic falls in assigning motherhood to everyone with a uterus. And so I applaud these interviewees for being so brave and honest and sharing their stories and I'm very, very, very interested and can't wait to dive into this one. Next! Unwell Women, A Journey Through Medicine and Myth in a Man-Made World by Eleanor Cleghorn. This book was recommended to me by a very wonderful video that I'll link down below titled Resident Sicko, My Chronic Illness Reading List. I honestly want to read each and every book that Hannah lists in this video but this is the one I decided to start with. This book covers how historically medicine has failed women and to show this, our author shows her own trials and tribulations that she had to endure in order 
order to reach her diagnosis of an autoimmune disease. The all too common and relatable experiences of not being taken seriously when advocating for your own health and the different directions that we all take in order to find some answers. But this isn't just a memoir, she also explores a lot of other people's experiences to better illustrate how complicated the relationship is between women and medicine. This sounds very strong and well done, worth the read, and also a little too close to home seeing as I'm very deep in my journey of trying to understand my own chronic illness, so it's gonna make me mad. <laughs> I can tell already. Being somebody who was told to just try aspirin by a doctor when my pain got so bad that I barfed on the side of the road, this book is for me. <laughs> Next, The Body in Pain by Elaine Scari. This book was recommended to me by the Dear Hank and John podcast. In episode three, they discuss ever so briefly how pain surpasses language and how we have to use metaphor in order to communicate our experiences with other people. And also the desperation that comes with not having any kind of relief to the physical experience and then the many psychological routes that one has to take in order to feel some relief from their chronic pain. They only discussed this for a few minutes, but I was so fascinated by the concept. And so when they recommended this book and they claimed that this book flashes out that conversation even more thoroughly. I added it to my cart immediately and shipped it to my house. I feel like this book will help me feel hard while also expanding my perceptions on pain. At first glance, it reminds me of the book, The Body Keeps the Score, which is a really excellent nonfiction about trauma. You can read this if you want. You should read this if you want. So yes, I'm very curious. So that was the last book in the category, Owies My Body. Let us progress into the category, Owies the world. <laughs> As we enter this category, allow me to answer all the comments that may say, if you don't like the United States, then why don't you just leave with, I have. Moving on, starting with Are Prisons Obsolete by Angela Y. Davis. Angela Davis wears many hats. She's a political activist, a philosopher, an author, and so much more. She earned her doctorate in philosophy in Germany and is now a professor in the University of California. She holds a vast activist history, and within that, she is a prominent figure in the prison abolition movement and refers to the United States prison system as the prison industrial complex. The back of the book says an unflinching critique on how and why more than two million Americans are presently behind bars and the corporations who profit from their suffering. So from my understanding, this is a short yet solid book that expands on those theories. I'm so excited because I've yet to read an entire book by Angela Davis and so I am more than ready to fall down the rabbit hole that is everything she's ever written. Up next we have The Conquest of Bread by Peter Kropotkin. For some reason my cover says Peter. I don't know. This is another short book. My husband ordered this one so if there are any books that cover these kinds of concepts that you feel to be stronger please let me know. I'm always curious for more books. Personally if I had the choice I would have picked up Kropotkin's Memoirs of a Revolutionist but from my understanding this is the book that's responsible for left-leaning political and philosophical YouTube videos being called bread to. It's from the late 1800s and within it Kropotkin historically analyzes his own utopian vision. The back of the book claims that his main problems are feudalism and capitalism and he explains why they require and encourage poverty and scarcity in order to thrive. People's opinions on this one seem to be a bit split but it seems like my cup of tea and from what I've gathered it may not be the book for fleshing out anarcho-communist ideas but it does seem like a must read seeing as he has been deemed the father of anarchism so consider me curious. Next, Manufacturing Consent by Edward S. Herman and Noam Chomsky. This book and analyzes and critiques the propagandistic nature of the United States media and how the 24-hour news cycle is anything but reliable or helpful in terms of understanding the world around us. According to the internet, he uses the lacking examples of deceptive media coverage of the North American Free Trade Agreement, the Mexican financial meltdown, and more. Through case studies, these two illustrate the dangerous, dichotomous way of determining worthy and unworthy news. The too long didn't read synopsis is simply the American press manipulates the public's perception and this book aims to dissect that. That's all. <laughs> I feel like this book is always applicable, but especially applicable now seeing the abundance of us versus them tactics being used in the news speaking of us versus them Next, we have How Fascism Works by Jason Stanley. Stanley was a child refugee in World War II and is now a very well-known philosopher and scholar in propaganda. So it's pretty safe to say that he has a good understanding of fascism and how it works. Within this book, he states that fascist tactics have been present in the United States political sphere for well over a century. And the bottom line is that he hopes to educate his readers on these tactics. <clears throat> Let me know if any of this rings a bell or two. Exploiting a mythic version of the nation's past. Anti-intellectualism directed towards universities and experts, or maybe attacking labor groups or welfare. Stanley states that these are the mechanisms that are used to reinforce division within population and shapes the society vulnerable to the appeals of authoritarian leadership. My favorite claim from this that I've seen floating around is that a nation does not need to be inherently fascist in order to suffer from the consequences of fascist politics. This book sits at the top of my TBR and I'm both anxious and excited to open it up. So there you have it, 10 nonfiction books that sit on my to-be-read shelf from snails to mushrooms, pain to diagnoses, propaganda to fascism. Let me know what you're gonna be for Halloween. Let me know what your favorite nonfiction book is. Let's start a conversation in the comments. And as always, thank you for clicking Thank you for caring and thank you for being nice. We'll see you in the next one. Bye!